Welcome back. Now, it's a concept that rather puts the high-speed rail project in the shade. Designs for what's being called the Hyperloop would enable passengers to travel from London to Birmingham in just eight minutes. The plan by an American inventor who's already developed space rockets would see people and vehicles put inside magnetically levitated pods travelling through a long tunnel at speeds of 800 miles an hour. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's the Hyperloop and it'll carry you at 800 miles an hour if its creator Elon Musk has his way. The man behind the electric car has come up with what he's calling the fifth form of transport. It's this cross between a Concorde, a railgun and an air hockey table. <laughs> if anyone can make it happen, perhaps he can. He's already made space rockets and on a practical level, PayPal. Today, frustrated at the slow pace of plans for high-speed transport in the US, he unveiled his 57-page design plan for the Hyperloop. Powered by the sun, it would use magnets and fans to shoot capsules floating on air through a long tube. So how, how would you like something that uh, can never crash, mm -hmm. um, it is immune to weather, um, it goes uh, three or four times faster than the, the, the sort of bullet train that's Your being built. Jet. Well, it, it, will, it goes about, let's say, an average speed of twice uh, what, uh, what, what an aircraft would, would do. It would, he says, transport people from Los Angeles to San Francisco in just half an hour and at a relatively modest cost of $6 billion. And a UK Hyperloop? Well, that would cut the hour and a half journey from London to Birmingham to a mere eight minutes. We need to have a breakthrough. We need to have a transportation system that doesn't operate on freeways, that doesn't take freeway laneage, and that doesn't re require petroleum to operate it. And uh, that, uh, that could be Mr. Musk's idea, uh, but he has to prove it. And there's the rub. Mr. Musk is too busy with other schemes to develop his Hyperloop. He's calling on fellow travellers to get his vision off the ground. Well, I've been speaking to the technology journalist and executive editor of CNET, Molly Wood, and the head of transport of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers, Philippa Oldham. So, Molly Wood, you're completely sold on this idea, are you? <laughs> I am completely sold on the idea of a big idea. So I am sold on the idea of trying something revolutionary and of, of new, exciting technology, yes. Well, Philip Alden, what's not to like? 800 miles per hour? I mean, wow. It is pretty impressive, and what is great is that it's being uh, released in the open domain. So it means that other engineers around the world can see what novel concepts are being proposed and actually how they can engage and help potentially make this a solution. But you're sceptical whether it would ever work. Uh, uh, the devil's in the detail, as with all engineering problems. Molly Wood, I mean, let's be honest, it's the silliest of silly season stories, completely unrealistic, a lovely pipe dream, but a pipe dream nonetheless. Oh, no, absolutely not. This is old technology in some cases. The idea for a transportation system like this came about as early as the 1800s. It is absolutely technologically possible, and we have been handed a very complete technological plan by someone who has a really great track record of bringing revolutionary products to the market. This is 100% possible if we have the will and the desire. I think there's no reason we can't do it. And the guy behind it um, came up with PayPal, Philip Roldham, so why not? Uh, the hundred percent I'm not so sure about. I think there is further work to go on um, and be done, but it, definitely there is something in this. And, and like Molly said, some of the work has been done previously. Though interestingly, the, the research that was done previously on hover trains, for example, in the 1970s, never actually came to fruition. So we'll see, we'll see thing, how things develop. But well, Molly, would, I mean, history is... I don't like saying this because I feel like a technological party pooper, but um, <laughs> history is littered with flops like the Sinclair C5, Segway and so on. Isn't this just another one of them? This is absolutely something that faces an uphill battle. I am certainly not uh, a technological or a political naive. I know that there are big things to be overcome, but I really want to embrace the idea that we as a species can solve these problems with technology. We have done it before. We have an amazing track record of figuring out how to fly, of sending people to the moon, of curing diseases, of, of mapping the human genome. And I feel like solving our transportation and energy issues can can easily fall into that solution if we just have the will, if we just believe it. 
Philippa Oldham, and I work really, really hard. I, Philippa Oldham, I can feel that you're <laughs> sort of struggling to, to really <laughs> put your positive hat on, but <laughs> give us the engineering, the realistic <laughs> perspective now. Um, I think, it's, I mean, the issue is there's a, a number of novel concepts in there, and it's about how you approach each of those separately. So not only have we got it travelling at a low pressure in a tube, but it's, you know, how we make sure that that pressure is maintained, how we get there. The solar panels on the tube are being proposed, and so, you know, is enough energy from that and the battery is going to be there. So it, actually, is it going to be a very energy intensive solution, which we all know the energy demands at the moment are a, a big impact on globally. So that's something that maybe needs to be readdressed to look at efficiency. But it, it's, it's definitely something that looks at innovation and, and hopefully we'll get engineers working across the world together. The Victorians had the vision to dream of a, a network of railways and we're all grateful for that now. Why are we more defeatist today? I think we know more about what the technology can do. And so I don't think we're more defeatist. I think potentially we're more realistic. Um, and we, we also have a lot more things to bear in mind. Uh, the UK, for example, doesn't have the space to expand and try all these different things. The US potentially does, um, which I think is, is where the proposal is. But one of the things that Molly didn't mention is the cost um, of, the, of such a project and the development of the technology. And that is something that we do have to take into account, not only with developing the technology, but also making it sustainable and Maintainable. Molly, a lot of people would balk at the idea of travelling at 800 miles an hour. Would you be the first passenger on this novel concept? <laughs> I am quite certain that the first passengers on this device would be test pilots of some sort. But absolutely. I mean, look, these are the kinds of things that it, it's not going to come to market. It's not going to come out for consumers until it is safe. There is a lot of research, testing, design and of course innovation that has to go into building something like this. I think my perspective is, is only that it is technologically possible and I don't want to strangle this baby in the crib with negativity and cynicism. If there's a project this big in the works, then suddenly you have a host of industries that are interested in trying to get involved and solve the small problems that eventually add up to the big solution. Molly Wood, I admire your <laughs> optimism and enthusiasm and Philippa Oldham, your realism too. Thank you both very much for joining me.